coming to his house and gather in his name to worship him. We have coming to his house and gather in his name to worship him. We have coming to his house and gather in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Jesus Christ the Lord. My dear sisters and brothers, greetings in the Lord. I understand that people from all over the country and abroad are participating in this Eucharistic celebration. I know many individuals and communities from Mumbai, Pune, Bangalore, Mangalore, Goa, Kochi, New Delhi, Jaipur, and many other parts of the country and abroad are participating in the celebration of this Holy Eucharist at this moment. Uniting ourselves with them all, offering our intentions to the Lord at this altar, bringing before the Lord the victims of the global pandemic COVID-19, all the health workers, doctors, nurses and voluntary servants and all those who are suffering in one way or other because of the lockdown. Let us bring before the Lord all these intentions. Let us offer our own fears, anxieties and worries at the feet of the Lord and with sentiments of trust and hope in the Lord let us begin the celebration of this Holy Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Eucharist worthily, let us acknowledge our sinfulness, and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Daniel. The assembly condemned Susanna to death. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, O eternal God, who does discern what is secret, who art aware of all things before they come to be, thou knowest that these men have borne false witness against me, and now I am to die. Yet I have done none of the things that they have wickedly invented against me. The Lord heard her cry, and as she was being led away to be put to death, 
God aroused the holy spirit of a young lad named Daniel and he cried out with a loud voice I am innocent of the blood of this woman All the people turned to him and said What is this that you have said Taking his stand in the midst of them he said Are you such fools you sons of Israel Have you condemned a daughter of Israel without examination and without learning the facts Return to the place of judgment for these men have borne false witness against her Then all the people returned in haste and the elders said to him Come sit among us and inform us for God has given you that right And Daniel said to them separate them far from each other and I will examine them When they were separated from each other he summoned one of them and said to him You all relic of wicked days your sins have now come home which you have committed in the past pronouncing unjust judgments condemning the innocent and letting the guilty go free though the lord said do not put to death an innocent and righteous person now then if you really saw him tell me this on the what tree did you see them being intimate with each other he answered under a mastic tree and daniel said very well you have lied against your own head for the angel of the go- or the angel of god has received the sentence from god and will immediately cut you in two then he put him aside and commanded them to bring the other and he said to him you offspring of canaan are not of judah beauty has deceived you and lust has perverted your heart this is how you both have been dealing with the daughters of israel and they were intimate with you through fear but a daughter of judah would not endure your wickedness now then tell me under what tree did you catch them being intimate with each other he answered under an evergreen grove rock oak and daniel said to him very well you also have lied against your own head for the angel of god is waiting with his sword to sow you in two that he may destroy you both then all the assembly shouted loudly and blessed god who saves those who hope in him and they rose against the two elders for out of their own mouths daniel have convicted them of bearing false witness and they did to them as they had wickedly planned to do to their neighbor acting in accordance with the law of moses they put them to death thus innocent blood was saved that day the word of the lord thanks, thanks be to god some our response if i should walk in the valley of darkness no evil would i fear for you are there if i should, if I should walk in the valley of darkness no evil would i fear for you are there the lord is my shepherd there is nothing i shall want fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit if i, if I should walk in the valley of darkness no evil could i fear for you are there he guides me along the right path he is true to his name if i should walk in the valley of darkness no evil would i fear if, if i should walk in the valley of darkness no evil would i fear You are there with your crook and your staff with this you give me comfort you have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes my head you have anointed with oil my cup is overflowing if, if i should walk in the valley of darkness no evil would i fear 
surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life in the lord's own house shall i dwell forever and ever if i should walk in the valley of darkness no evil could i fear acclamation words so lord our spirit and life you have the words of eternal life glory and praise to you lord jesus christ the lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint john glory to you o lord Jesus went to the mount of olives at daybreak he appeared in the temple again and as all the people came to him he sat down and began to teach them the scribes and pharisees brought a woman along who had been caught committing adultery and making her stand there in the middle they said to Jesus master this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery and the law of moses has ordered us to stone women of this kind what have you got to say they asked him this as a test looking for an accusation to use against him but jesus bent down and started writing on the ground with his finger As they persisted with their question he straightened up and said let the one among you who is guiltless be the first to throw a stone at her then he bent down and continued writing on the ground when they heard this they went away one by one beginning with the eldest until the last one had gone and Jesus was left alone with the woman who remained in the middle Jesus again straightened up and said woman where are they has no one condemned you no one sir she replied neither do i condemn you said jesus go away and from this moment sin no more the gospel of the lord praise you lord jesus christ my dear sisters and brothers in jesus christ susanna was unjustly condemned it was a very tragic moment of her life she is about to lose her very life but what we see is a very beautiful gesture from susanna she makes a very beautiful prayer it was an expression of her faith she prays eternal father you know every secret you know everything that happens in the world before even it happens you know that i am innocent you know that i am unjustly condemned to die you know that my accusers have given false witness against me that's all what she prays but it was a beautiful expression of her faith as she faced 
this tormenting moment in her life. When we are faced with difficulties, tragedies in life, very often we lose faith in God. We question God, why this to me? But Susanna gives us a beautiful example of how to affirm our faith in the Lord in moments of trials and difficulties in our own life. Perhaps because of, because of Susanna's faith, God intervenes and saves her life on that day. In the Gospel today, we have a continuation or an extension of Susanna's experience. The scribes and the Pharisees bring to Jesus a woman caught in the act of committing adultery. And as per the law of Moses, such a woman is to be stoned to death. They bring her to Jesus in order to test him to know what he would say. Upon persisting for an answer, Jesus uses the occasion to teach them a few things, few important things in life. First of all, Jesus tells them, the Pharisees by their action, their action of condemning that woman is sheer hypocrisy. The Pharisees was quick to judge and condemn others, but they never looked into themselves they were never able to look into themselves and find what is wrong with them. And Jesus, Jesus challenges them by telling them that the one who has no sin in you be the first to throw a stone at her. Surprisingly, they all put their heads down and went away one by one. Perhaps for the first time, they were challenged to look into their own lives. By this action, Jesus also reminds us that before we ever point a finger at another person, before we pass a word of condemnation or judgment, it is mandatory for all of us to look into our own lives and see our own sinfulness and unworthiness. By this action, Jesus also reveals that God is merciful and compassionate. All through his life, Jesus manifested God's love and compassion through his words and deeds. And today, he reminds us once again, God is merciful and compassionate. No matter how far away we have gone away from him, he is willing and ready to forgive us the moment we confess and repent. And thirdly, through this incident, Jesus also reminds us that the Pharisees saw the women and judged her for one wrong action. They were not able to see her past nor her future. But Jesus saw the whole person Jesus knew her past, the circumstances which led her to that situation. And Jesus also knew how beautiful a person she is if she repents. And so Jesus offers her an opportunity to repent and reform her life. My dear sisters and brothers, all of us have gone away from the Lord in one way or other. It is the mercy and compassion of our Heavenly Father that allows us to come back and live a beautiful life for God and for one another. Today let us ask the Lord, the Lord of mercy and compassion, the Lord who never judges anyone unjustly, to allow us to come back to him and lead a beautiful love of, life of love and compassion. And may God bless all of us.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, please receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with a humble and contrite heart. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be pleasing and acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance, a joyful purity of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through bodily fasting, you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices we pray join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with the Francis, our Pope, Oswald, our Bishop, all the bishops and clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us share among ourselves God's gift of peace. Lamb of God, Lord, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, not being made a confirmation, but your loving mercy be for protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are invited to share in this banquet of love. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Let us pray.
Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults, and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray, the people who call upon you, the living a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. to thy name. 